start to kick things off. So good afternoon, Vermont. I'm calling this meeting of the Advisory Public Health Subcommittee to order. I'm Tom Alasco. I want to take a role for our subcommittee uh, members. You can just say here are present. This meeting is being recorded and or transcribed. Mark, you're on mute. Danica, Tom, I'm here. I'm here. Uh, Dr. Mark Levine. Yep. He's present. Um, Tim Wessel. Present. Thank you. Thank you. Ingrid Jonas. Saw her on. I'm here. Thank you. And this, just quickly, if I could get um, those of the uh, the CCB that are in attendance as well. I heard um, Chairman Pepper. Are you there? Uh, Pepper stepped out, but Julie is here. And so is David Scher, our general counsel. And Nellie will be coming in and out. Great. Thank you. Gina. Ryan Winkle is okay. here. Hi. And Megan, are you on the line as well for the minute? Yes, I'm here. Okay, thank you everyone for your attendance and greetings to all of you uh, that are also in the room in Vermont and have made the effort and have the interest to attend this subcommittee meeting. Since this is the first subcommittee meeting, I want to do brief, uh, and I want to emphasize the word and the concept of brief because we have much to do and discuss. Brief intros. Uh, for the members of the subcommittee before moving on with our agenda. I'm going to be speaking very quickly. Uh, because of the time constraints, we have back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back meetings. Um, one start, another subcommittee meeting starting right after this. So again, my name is Tom Nolasco. I'm general counsel for the National Association of Cannabis Businesses, or the NACB. It's a national trade organization that specializes in creating standards and best practices for the cannabis industry. Our goal is to legitimize and elevate the growing cannabis marketplace. And part of our function at the NACB is to consult with various state legislators and regulators as we are doing with this engagement. My brief background, I'm now a 20 plus year attorney uh, specializing in business or commercial litigation. I've been in this space for seven or eight years, beginning with cannabis lawsuits. That led into compliance issues, employment, real estate, all the issues that you know good startups have uh, when they're getting into an industry. I've been serving on panels for the Arizona State Bar where I'm based out of and then that led to panels throughout the country on issues like licensing, 280E, social equity, and the like. So it's my privilege to help coordinate these very subcommittee meetings and create good policy for the state of Vermont. So before we get into introductions to our very knowledgeable and accomplished advisory subcommittee members, I want to introduce the two members of the NACB that will be leading this public health subcommittee meeting, Mark Gorman and Danica Scott. Mark, do you want to give a brief intro? Sure, thanks, Tom. Can you hear me? You can. All right. Okay. Good. Um, uh, I've uh, been with NACB for about a year and a half. Uh, before that, I spent uh, a good 20 years as uh, uh, senior vice president, of leading government relations at the Distilled Spirits Council, where I did have the chance to come up to uh, Vermont, meet with the uh, control board, and, and so forth. So the the, the DL uh, the liquor control board. So. Um, a little bit of uh, experience with uh, uh, heavily regulated uh, industries. I find there's a lot of similarities uh, in, in some instances between the alcohol regulation and the cannabis regulation, and uh, uh, look forward to contributing uh, to this project. It's very exciting. Thanks. Hi, good morning. I'm Danica Scott. Um, I am leading uh, marketing communications and strategic initiatives for NACB. I entered cannabis back in 2018, but on the payment side, which is um, still very much so an emerging market. I also have over 21 years of experience in heavily regula regulated markets, including financial services, payments, which of course touch banking. 30-year um, marketer, excited to be here. Um, a lot of the items we're going to be discussing in this committee are very much so in tune with both mine and Mark's experience in the past, especially when it comes to providing the public with 
the information that they need to make decisions um, or to be informed. So we're excited to be here. And with that being said, Tom, I'll let you come back or, or Mark as we get started, unless you're ready for me to move to um, this slide. Uh, let's, let's just uh, allow our, our advisory committee members. Oh, I'm to do so this. sorry. I'm so very uh, sorry. Okay. Uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Levine, if you're ready, if you could give uh, a brief hello and introduction. Hello, and I can be very brief. Um, <laughs> currently, Commissioner uh, of Health for the state of Vermont. Uh, while I have been Commissioner of Health, I've had a number of um, priorities and initiatives with regard to substance misuse. I was on the Governor's Advisory Commission on Marijuana and chaired the Prevention and Education Subcommittee, which you've probably seen the report of at some point and seeing all the materials prior to this uh, body meeting. And um, I'm an internal medicine physician uh, and practiced for many, many years, continue to still be involved in academic medicine and teach and um glad to be here that'll be it thank you dr ingrid jonas i'll also be brief and i apologize i'm driving so maybe some background noise um let's see i'm a designee from the attorney general's office i retired as a major with the vermont state police just this past by the Senate Committee on Committees to uh, put the attention before the board of the needs of the municipalities, concerns of municipalities, and um, I've served for five years on the Broadway Select Board, having served as vice chair and then chair as recently as last year. Um, and my expertise is certainly not in public health, although like everyone uh, recently I've been asked to become an expert in things like masking, if you follow the news and uh, vaccinations and all of those things as related to COVID-19. Um, very excited to be a part of this committee and uh, lend whatever uh, help I can to uh, some decisions, especially from the framing of uh, how it affects everybody in the towns, individual towns, municipal governments of Vermont. Thank you. Thank you, Tim, and thank you all for your time and service to this subcommittee meeting uh, and, and the subcommittee. And I, I understand from, from Nellie or Julie uh, in the room, we have at least three others um, from the public, and that, that number might have grown since, uh, since I first got on here. Uh, and I want to make sure that everyone knows that written public comments can still be submitted electronically via the web form on the CCB website uh, and have been since May 2021. I also want to ensure everyone that your comments have been received, re reviewed, uh, and considered by each and every subcommittee member. And of course, we appreciate your input. There will also be time for public comments and questions at the end of this hour, towards the end of it, as it will be for each subcommittee meeting. Uh, in addition, the Cannabis Control Board will be hosting dedicated meetings for public comments both at a Friday board meeting via the public link or at the CCB's public comment evenings, which will be posted on the CCB website as well. So your voice will be heard and considered, but pressing deadlines are upon us for each of these subcommittee meetings, and it's critical that we have constructive communications between the board members to meet those deadlines. So I do not want the, this hour to be dominated by public comments. 
uh, although there will be time for it at the end of the meeting. Uh, and again, those can be made and addressed through those different avenues. Okay, I will turn this over to the leaders of the subcommittee meeting, Mark and Danica, if you wanna take it from here. Yeah. Danica, you're on the... I got it, the statement of the year. Um, <laughs> thank you everyone for coming. Uh, to, to give just a brief setup up um, for those of you who are subcommittee members, Dr. Levine, um, Tim and Ingrid, this discussion guide follows the documents that you were provided in an email from us. I will also say our goal is to give you these documents um, a little bit ahead of time that each of you receive differently, but this is almost identical to what was there, and um, so I'd like to give that a, as some setup. Um, I'm going to be very quick on this. We um, also recognize the public comments, so I am going to skip over those, but I do think it is important to note that these will be a part of the final package that um, the uh, Cannabis Control Board will be putting out there. Um, so we do have also where to submit your public comments. Um, I, I'm sorry, did, did someone say something? Okay. So I did leave an opportunity if the advisory committee has any comments regarding public comments. Um, I can certainly capture those, and if not, I'm happy to move on. Um, and that's, this is a working document, so you may see me typing or taking notes in here so that we can capture everything appropriately um, as we discuss this. Mark, you want to jump in and add anything before we hit the next couple of slides? Um, no, no, I'm just looking okay. forward to getting down to the meat of it. Okay, excellent. If there are no um, comments regarding anything that was sent uh, via public comment, um, I'll move on. So um, is that okay with Ingrid and Tim and Dr. Levine? Okay, excellent. Thank you so much. All right. Mark, do you want to go ahead? Yeah. Uh, we, I think you've all seen what the scope of work or the director, uh, direction for this uh, subcommittee is. Uh, we thought it was made it made sense to break it down into th three uh, components, and and because uh, there are a lot of issues uh, in uh, in front of us. So, phase one, which we're beginning today, is the advertising and marketing rules, um, and uh, that encompasses um, you know the guidelines that the legislature gave uh, to the control board. Uh, it, uh, encompasses warning statements for packaging and labeling uh, and uh, and uh, licensee uh, materials that will help guide uh, licensees on a, on a sort of a self-regulatory uh, uh, process, although the control board does retain, obviously, all the regulatory authority. So, you know, the next, after we, I think this is going to be an introduction to the whole thing, the whole process today. Uh, and uh, probably our next meeting will be much more about the uh, uh, substance of the uh, these issues. Uh, but after that, we'll follow on with packaging and labeling, uh, and uh, get into other things like uh, you know cannabis uh, warning statements, warning labels, uh, you know other things that need to be on on uh, packaging, such as. Uh, uh, when when the product was made, what the shelf life is expected to be, what the serving sizes are, and so forth. And uh, the last phase, uh, which is important, is uh, edibles and uh, you know how and the Department of Health's oversight in that in that area. So any any questions about that? It's uh, we just thought it was a decent uh, way to break it down into. Uh, Meals. I mean, they're not bite-sized pieces. They're, they're more like daily meals. So, uh, phase one: uh, advertising and marketing. Um, we can go to the next slide. Today. Excellent. Okay. We wanted to uh, also your briefing materials are organized in in this way. We 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 take a look at what the legislature what the legislature's objectives were and. It's basically making sure that that the uh, industry is not promoting cannabis use. It's limiting the exposure of advertising and, and uh, other marketing to uh, eligible consumers under, uh, over the age of 21. So you can't target people under 21. That's uh, not unlike how uh, alcohol advertising is regulated. Um, 
and ensuring uh, consumer protection and, and public safety. I think consumers are uh, have a, a right to expect, and they do expect from past experience, uh, to be uh, notified appropriately of, of hazards and, and uh, you know appropriate uh, consumption guidelines and, and that sort of thing. So the legislature also, because this is this is uh, advertising, there are certain constitutional free speech rights that that uh, businesses do have, and they want us to be mindful of uh, what these constitutional protections are for commercial speech uh, and uh, and how that might uh, apply to the cannabis market. Interesting, uh, interesting concept for sure. Before uh, we go. Sure, absolutely. Before we go into Act 62, the intent of this is not to read to anyone. So, um, because these are readily available to the public and other folks. So if we feel like we need to define anything as it relates to advertising or marketing, we can certainly come back to these. But um, I want to uh, be sure before we do move past this, um, Dr. Levine, Tim, or Ingrid, is there anything in particular um, in here that you'd like to discuss? I'm sure everybody's had a chance to, to at least look this over. Not at this time. Thank you. Okay. Okay, fantastic. So from there, um, I do think it's important that we just could briefly go through what the rules are that are by Act 62. I'm going to be fast. Um, they don't want any cannabis establishment to contain anything that's false or, or misleading or deceptive, promotes overconsumption, represents the use of cannabis, has curative effects, offers a prize award or inducement for purchasing cannabis or a cannabis product, except that price discounts are allowed, that offers free samples of cannabis or cannabis products, and depicts a person under 21 years of age consuming cannabis or cannabis products or is designed to have the effect of being appealing to anyone under the age of 21. Very straightforward, um, not unlike uh, what I, what Mark and I have seen or anyone else has seen in the U.S. and states that have uh, passed cannabis rules. Any questions or discussions on the advertising rules on this page? Okay, I'm going to move on. And then also, um, they, uh, Vermont now has adopted one of the strictest um, rules of mediums for advertising. You, you really, the state wants 85% of the audience to be over 21. They want everything to contain health warnings in advertising. And then also, currently, the way that Act 62 is written is that any marketing or advertising will have to be submitted to the board for approval. So with that being said, that brings us to a lot of the meat of specific guidelines that you're going to see um, that uh, the NACB has put together to give a framework. Um, and the way that um, we really view this is it's a starting point and a jumping off point to give all of you on the subcommittee something to react to and give you the opportunity um, to see how this might shape out uh, together with us for the state of Vermont. So knowing that these um, particular, you know, disclosures are in here, they're going to be required, um, and also that there uh, may be changes, you know, that, that are going to be asked of folks who submit their marketing materials if they don't follow what would necessarily be the rules or the guidelines. So I have an opportunity for any comments here on um, 164 and 162. We'll also be covering a point of sale flyer that is uh, specific for health warnings for each of the establishments momentarily because it has some specific stipulations that may also help in the drafting of any language. Okay. Tim, good. All right. You can just do a thumbs up if you need to. I, I was just going to say I'm practicing a little bit of catch up just because. Um, okay. Got these materials yesterday, and I just haven't been able to review as much as I'd like to. So I'd rather than be off the cuff, I'd rather just review first. If no problem at all, and um, you'll each receive this deck as well. Um, so this is good. And um, any discussions? We we figured today was really going to be that starting point for all of us in this. Yeah, pretty much all. Pretty much all this material, uh, Anika, is uh, in that four four or five pages. That it is. 
day or two ago, and uh, we'll, we'll try to get you a little bit earlier um, uh, notification of some of these things, but this will probably continue to be uh, the substance of our discussion through the, the next meeting as well. Mm -hmm. So then um, what we put forth uh, for the subcommittee um, is some starting considerations for ensuring compliance. Again, also in the packet that was sent to each of you individually. Um, I'd like to start this by saying I had a discussion with an advertising executive who um, deals with cannabis. And I asked him, would it be helpful to you and your team if you were given branding requirements or at least legal disclaimers that were issued by the state? His, his comments, that would be super helpful. To be honest, we've seen different attorneys have different opinions in the same state in the past. So I think that um, from my career and, and having been through this in financial services and banking, if I know the rules of the road, I can follow the rules of the road and I can um, stay within compliance uh, for marketing my program. So that's really, um, I thought that was an important statement um, that people do while some people feel that maybe there's too much regulation around certain areas, if we know the rules, we can follow the rules. So I want to also put out there the different types of advertising mediums that um, may be available to a cannabis business. There's print, so that's really at any, I'm sorry, go ahead. Somebody say something? Nope. Okay, excellent. There's print, so that's any advertising in printed form, including POS flyers in, st in store, brochures, posters, newspaper, magazine. There's digital, which would include things like email, online, search engine optimization, both paid and organic keywords, sponsored ads, social media, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, YouTube. For the subcommittee members, um, each of you received some supplemental materials, including Pew Research on uh, digital advertising that I think will be immensely helpful if you have questions, especially surrounding demographics. Also, I will say that digital is, a, is complex, um, given that uh, it's against some, um, some social media guidelines um, in Canada. So it, it, it becomes an interesting platform. Then there is direct advertising, things like direct mail, postcards, letters, leaflets. LSM stands for local store marketing. I'll make sure to spell that out or guerrilla marketing. It's literally the guy standing on a street corner handing out a flyer. Um, so those are things also to be considered or even in person. There's broadcast, TV, radio, online channels, YouTube, and then of course sponsorship. So this is not to be um, all inclusive, but it is to say it's a big complex world of advertising out there. And so um, if we're going to give guidance, then there's some opportunity to, to at least know where that guidance would apply. So one of the first things that we did as we get into the meat of discussions, and this was in supplemental packages, but again, each of you will receive this, and this will also be online, is um, California has done a nice job of putting together advertising or promoting commercial cannabis, really kind of a rules of the road, it's a one-page flyer. Then also I supplied the NACB advertising checklist so that anyone who is putting an advertisement together would have the opportunity to go in and make sure before they print or before they post, does it meet the requirements? So there is opportunity for something to be similar for Vermont um, and that would be our recommendation is that we again provide guidance. Yeah, I think this is going to become a, a, a very interesting subject of uh, our discussion because, uh, you know, having the control board in a position of having to approve all advertisements before they're, uh, you know, before they're run or printed or what have you, as well as health label, uh, you know, labels and packages, it's going to put, uh, you know, quite a, quite a, responsibility on the shoulders of the board and you know whether fees uh, for doing this can begin to pay for the staff that might need to be hired and, and that sort of thing is uh, something worthy of a lot of consideration so that's, that's uh, the nature of this discussion we think so before we move on to the next are there any questions of the subcommittee members about the items we've just spoken about no. Okay. Thank you. I think it'd be important to have not only examples of the 
approvable but of the absolutely out of the question. I think that is excellent, Dr. Levine. I will tell you from my days in uh, financial services, that was part of the, the branded guidelines. We would say you may do this, but don't do this. So um, especially when it came to, to items that were false or misleading, because it's not just cannabis, there's also federal advertising laws, as everybody is aware. You know, so, so these, we want to very much align this around making sure people can do business and we don't want to prevent business. So completely agree with you. Um, so I will move to the next. And um, this is the point of sale flyer that I apologize was not in your information packet, this additional item, but it, it will be in your follow-up. So um, can everyone see that? Okay, it may be a little bit small, but basically it is um, at retail point of purchase where a customer can at least be informed of, um, they don't have to take it. I, could, I When I read this, I feel like it's kind of like HIPAA. You don't have to take it, but at least you acknowledge it in some ways. Um, but uh, it's definitely there as something to be considered and may give us the opportunity to help us draft some of the additional language because it does talk about things that are important. Amount of time it takes effects, risks of driving under the influence, potential health risks, symptoms of problematic usage. So um, I do believe that there is almost a marrying of this particular item, even though it is not necessarily advertising, it, it, it is for public benefit, um, that it's important that the languages are, are the same or, or almost identical when it comes to some of the warnings here. Any thoughts on this particular item? I'm sure we'll get into this more. Can I just uh, throw out a thought that that last statement in there is kind of a zinger when you when you look at it from a I, I, perspective, you know, kind of like saying there's all these things to watch out for. Oh, and by the way, this is illegal. I, 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 I think that that is very important to note. I also um, would like to add that part of our recommendations will be to say, mm, will we to make recommendations like what you just noted, or at least to note those items. Um, I think that is also very important, so thank you for bringing that up. Anyone else? Yeah, uh, go ahead. I was gonna say, uh, you and I noticed uh, it's kind of an odd, odd statement in the, in the statute that says that the board has to review advertising and has to uh, call out the advertiser if, if it's in violation of, say, uh, you know, truthful, truthful, truthfulness or making health claims and what have you. And uh, but it also says that the board may require a warning label on advertising that if is concerned will be misleading uh, to the public. And we're just kind of wondering, like. Uh, you know, maybe somebody can help us with this, but why why would they even approve uh, the publication of an advertisement that is um, that is false, misleading, or making health claims? Um, you know, so. And we'll dive into that a little bit more. Yeah, absolutely. there's a lot of that. Absolutely. So, any additional items on this um, this retail point of sale flyer? If not, I'll move to the next slide. All right, excellent. So again, um, looks like we lost uh, Ingrid and hopefully she's back. Um, so excellent, I think. So I, I do think we lost her. I'm back. I'm okay, back. excellent. All right, thank you so much. So. Um, one of the things that Mark and I did was to carefully consider the experiences that we have had together jointly over the years, over 50, if you put it, if you add them up, and put together some specific recommendations. Again, this is for you, the subcommittee, to react to. You don't have to react to them right now, but these are items that um, we believe are an excellent um, opportunity to provide guidelines. Um, everything starts with action. And so um, this is in the packet that you were provided. Again, you're just seeing it in PowerPoint format. Um, but we do believe if it, whether there is approvals by the, the, the board or not, 
that it's incredibly important that um, those with licenses and those marketers understand what is required of them. If we don't tell them what's required, there's going to be a lot of back and forth and a lot of um, additional work, um, again, just, just to get, get them to the point that they can submit a viable document or advertising piece is an excellent opportunity to streamline items. Um, we'll need to also draft what those health warning labels look like for cannabis packaging. Um, we'll be providing examples uh, from other states and uh, possibly also other countries on that to give the board, from the, the subcommittee, something to react to. We have to specify means of assuring that 85% of that audience is over the age of 21. Uh, there are specific ways that can be done. Um, I've, I've worked in media uh, as part of my marketing and advertising career, and there are very specific things that can be done. And then also um, require age gating for social media sites and related advertising pages. Uh, that's the op where age gating is the term used for if you click a link to say to go to a liquor site, it's going to ask you your age and for you to input your age before you can go any further. Mark, you want to take this slide? Sure, and I want to mention also that we're, we're going to uh, be identifying for you the, the kinds of uh, compliance issues uh, here and rules that were required or requested by the uh, legislature. Uh, yep. The board was requested to, uh, you know, take them under consideration and determine how best to go. And and what what other uh, issues that we might be discussing that are we found to be common in other states that you might want to have drawn to your attention so we'll we'll try to separate those things out as we go along um, the one thing that the the uh, Vermont statute says is that uh, we should have language for uh, medicinal cannabis advertising and uh, it would need to uh, you know decide decide what that is of course and, and uh, That'll be, uh, I'm sure, tricky in some respects. Uh, develop possible sanctions for non-compliance with advertising rules and what the process might be to deal with non-compliance. Uh, the, uh, you know, uh, the law says that uh, the board can charge uh, a fee for uh, for considering uh, advertising, uh, you know, applications for, for advertisement approval, um, but it, uh, I don't think it says anything about fines for uh, violating uh, the board's uh, uh, decisions. All right, so developing a, an educational website for parents and guardians to use uh, in talking to uh, kids about marijuana, uh, maybe not unlike the, uh, the, the flyer that Denise was talking about earlier makes the, the critical points and expands actually upon the uh, uh, website that, uh, that already exists yeah. and and uh, finally here uh, initiatives that would uh, distinguish between commercial messages for adult use and medical cannabis so we want to uh, you know it's not it doesn't go it's not a foregone conclusion that rules for uh, adult use and, and uh, medical would be the same but we'll, we'll have a chance to consider that so that is the starting point of our recommendations and as mark said i uh, you know we're we're trying to take these in bites so um this will give the three of you something to react to and then we'll have the opportunity hopefully to speak with each of you one on one or your designee to have a discussion around um, your thoughts on this and how we can better refine it for the state of Vermont. So I'd like to open it up to the subcommittee members. I know there's a lot here, but to give you the opportunity to give any input or consideration so that we may capture those, especially as we'll be meeting again on Monday. Yeah, I mean, it's really, really would include things that people think ought to be off the table, other things that people think ought to be on the table. Agreed. And uh, we'll have another chance after you have it, after you have a chance to uh, read through all this and you know, think about it and talk about it. So Tim, were you, I saw your mic come off. Anything you'd like to add? 
I was just going to chime in and say uh, a little digestion would help me uh, with some of these materials, but uh, I, I'm particularly uh, interested in this idea of uh, no health claims because that's a very much gray area if you think about how many things. It, it's unique to cannabis, I think, that you wouldn't see a lot of liquor, you know, regardless of uh, Guinness's successful ad. Oh. <laughs> Good for you. You wouldn't see a lot of American liquor companies claiming health benefits, but um, marijuana claims abound. And yeah. Perhaps are justified, but some of them certainly are not. I just and, didn't mean by it, that's just a general comment. No, actually, I think that is excellent. That was a major discussion point that Mark and I had. Um, we provided in the reference material a link to the FDA's guidance on that very thing. So, um, I, I think it, that is not unnoted, and we will we will most definitely make uh, consideration for that through this. Everybody good, Dr. Levine, Ingrid? Okay. All right. So I'm going to skip over this blank page. So really, our next step, besides allowing everyone the opportunity to digest, is that we actually um, could get started with some tasks. And that would be to look at additional language that already exists in some of these areas and what would be the right thing for the state of Vermont. So we know that we, we've got to do the health warning labels, for, especially for packages. Um, you know, and then also draft the language on distinguishing between adult and recreational. And then um, any other general disclosures. Um, I read an interesting um, article in national, um, one of the national publications about Massachusetts, your neighboring state, and how they um, how they now have a menu of disclaimers you can pick if you choose. You have to say please can do consume responsibly, but then you also have to pick two of five. Um, that they gave you on um, impairment, um, concentration, health risk, uh, 21 years or older, or used by, not used by women who are pregnant or are of breastfeeding. And so again, while, while none of us want to put any burden that is undue or onerous, there are so many opportunities out there for Vermont to craft what works for your state and also covers the areas of um, public health that you would like to see covered. So those are our next steps um, in here. And so what will happen from here is um, there'll be additional materials related to this that Mark and I will provide um, to each of you. It's not going to be a lot more than what you're already seeing. This will probably be a little repetitious for the next few days. Um, but we'd love you know, any feedback that you might have right now before we move on to allowing any public comments. And if there isn't any, that's okay too. Well, I don't know if this is uh, insightful or naive, to be honest. but. Um, When you start looking at health claims and things of that sort, it's hard to just use the word cannabis or marijuana. It starts getting down to ingredients mm. and you know THC and what have you. Uh, is that being factored into any of this subcommittee's uh, work and into what's appropriate and what's not appropriate in advertising and marketing? Because as you know, there's so much you can buy right now that pre presumably is free of THC, mm -hmm. but have another ingredient that seems to work for everything that ails you, uh, and that you can buy uh, without any um, reservations whatsoever or restrictions. Uh, I, I just don't know if the work of this committee is, is getting that granular um, and and looking at that, or if it's just big words like cannabis and marijuana. <laughs> I would well, say. Doctor, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say that, that, as you'll see from some of the warning labels that have, uh, you know, we circulated some and we'll circulate others. So some of it says uh, 
it doesn't say marijuana, it doesn't say cannabis, it says THC on the, on the, on the warnings. Uh, but you, uh, you raise a fascinating point between the, uh, on the difference between uh, uh, medical and, and adult use uh, cannabis and cannabis derivatives that uh, we will have to, I think we'll have to come to grips with, decide whether to go down mm -hmm. that road or uh, maybe, or maybe not, who knows. Yeah. And as a subcommittee, yeah, it's, it's, it's your, as a subcommittee member, you know, it's your recommendations that we'll be putting forth. We'll all be working together on them. Um, so I think that's also important to note in here. Um, I know there is the basics, but then you could even also, um, Dr. Levine, to add on to that when we get into edibles, that's also a food. So then there's the whole aspect of the food piece um, and what that looks like uh, beyond just the fact of cannabis. So uh, we're, we're probably going to have some fun discussions on this, but at the same time, they're all very necessary. So if, is there anything additional from the subcommittee members? Because we are actually quite perfectly on time uh, ask if, what you've given any additional comments to move to the public comment portion of this meeting to hear from the public that's there. Very good. Well, I thank every uh, member of the subcommittee uh, for your patience, also for your attention and for being here. We're, um, we're thrilled to have the opportunity to do this with you. So uh, Tom, I have a spot for public comment if you would like to take that um, since we are at until the hour. Sure, and, and we can open it up now to those in attendance um, in Vermont, if anyone would like to have a, have a question um, or, or comment, uh, now is the time. Let me take a second. Right. It doesn't appear that there are any public comment today from the folks in the room. Okay, thank you, Julie. Uh, and again, it, I'm not trying to put anyone on the spot, um, but, but we will have this time reserved at, at the, the ending portion of each subcommittee meeting, uh, and you can still submit uh, written public comments um, through the website, and that's contained in the, in the slide there, the information. And there will be other opportunities for public comment at the other sub subcommittee meetings and at the CCB's uh, meetings as well. Unless anyone has anything else, I think we can uh, adjourn if I have a motion. I can make that motion. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Thank you everyone for your participation today. The next subcommittee meeting for public health will be Monday at this same time. And we look forward to seeing you then. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thanks Tom. Thank you. Look forward to it. This meeting is no longer being recorded